Hello everyone, this is Grandmaster Pascal Charbonneau with the first end game of the day for the Chessable Masters, first day of play today with our hashtag study chess. We are going to go through some key moments of the tournament as we go along to see what we can learn from the play here. We have a very interesting ending here where I thought it was a real teachable moment. White has just played the move c4 to c5, which forces a trade of queens. A trade of queens happens here. And in this position, we get to the key moment here. Um, we have a position where each side controls an open file. White has the B file, black has the D file. The A7 pawn is under attack, but is it really? So black plays a move A5, and this is a critical mistake and maybe the losing move. And so we're gonna look at why. Um, it looks like the, the key move for black would be to simply play a move like H6 or F6. Why? Well, let's see what happens when they play a5. When he plays a5, White makes a really strong move here, bishop to e7. It's actually a very simple move. All he's trying to do is he's trying to say, your rook cannot stay in the open file. If you play rook d7, there's rook b8 and it's checkmate, right? So there's no way, there's no way to stay on this file. There's always gonna be rook to b8. And so because of that, black is forced to play rook to c8. And now white plays rook c7. And after the, that, black is just passive. He cannot get counterplay because his rook is just not in a good position. Uh, we'll look at the rest of the game, but I did want to go back to the moment where black played uh, a5. And let's say we play h6, which is probably the best move, but f6 is also is also possible. The main, the main reason why uh, h6 is better is because the king actually hides better on h7 in this position, uh, so that there's no like rook b7 check if it comes to f7. But so on h6, let's say white takes the pawn, which, you know, of course is the... If white can take the pawn with impunity, then of course it's good. But black simply plays knight a3, and this is a simple sort of a counter tactic here. Rook b2, knight takes c2, rook takes bishop b3, and black is out of trouble by attacking both the, the pawn and the rook. They win the pawn back, and we'll have a very drawish endgame with bishops of opposite color. I mean, really, it would just be agreed to a draw probably very quickly. Note the pawn structure is actually exactly symmetrical, which is kind of funny. Um, but instead of this, let's see what happens. So he plays a5, white gains control of the open file, and I'm going to go through the rest of the game by just kind of showing the moves. But eventually, um, the, the, the pair of bishops becomes a factor, and the activity of the rook is key. Uh, it's also easier for white to activate their king. Basically, everything is right uh, now you know, for white in this endgame, uh, while it wouldn't have been if black had played h6. So let's just go through the moves. Black is passive, right? And so here, white is already uh, piling up on the c5 pawn. And white can actually take their time. Here he's offering to trade because the knight is not very, the knight is not an incredibly good piece here. It's not well anchored on any of the squares. And white is now winning the c5 pawn. And eventually they reached a rook ending, which is never never easy to win, but in this case, white's king is already in the center while black's king is far away. So this king is able to help uh, the pawn move up, and so that should be a winning ending for, for, for white. We'll see how it actually finished. Uh, and black simply resigned here because he's not on h4. White will simply play g4, and the black king, these double pawns actually work well to shield the black king from coming through. So I thought that this position after bishop takes c5 was very instructive, and I hope you learned something from it as well. Remember the importance of controlling the open file and having an active rook in the ending. Uh, thanks for joining me today. I'll be back tomorrow. This is Grandmaster Pascal Charbonneau, and after the day, day one of the Chessable Masters. Thank you.